When you design your course on our platform, you can separate your course into logical segments, which we call sections. And these typically follow this structure. You start out with an introduction or an overview section, followed by a main section, or maybe you have multiple main sections, depending on how long or how broad your course is. And then you end with a summary section. And as an option, you could also include an appendix section at the very end. It's not required, but it's an option. Uh, the first sections, the introduction, the main, and the summary sections, they're all used f uh, for you to upload video-based lessons that you supply, while the appendix section is really meant for you to upload PDF documents, handouts, or cheat sheets, any kind of supplementary information that you want to include in your course. Here's an example of a course that I created or that I'm working on right now uh, and the sections that I've created for it. I start out with the introduction or the overview section first, and then I follow it with two main sections. This particular case, it's how to post asset revaluations and then how to do the configuration for asset revaluations. Those are my two main sections where I will upload the bulk of my training lessons or my lectures. And then I follow it with a summary section at the end. And actually, let me add an appendix section as well. Appendix, and I just save this because I plan to add uh, some PDF handouts that I want to upload. Notice that the appendix is at the beginning now. That's not where I want it. So I can just drag it all the way down to where I want that section to be. And that's it. So the next step is to create the actual lessons and upload those. But I just wanted to show you how to create these sections. Once you have these sections in place, then you can move on to create the actual lessons. The next step is to create lessons for each individual section. And a section can have one or multiple lessons. And a lesson is a video file of you presenting a small segment of your course. Now, this video file could be in three different uh, uh, formats or types. It could be you presenting a PowerPoint slide, just like what I'm doing right now. It's just a PowerPoint presentation and you narrate the audio to it and then you save it as a video file. Or it could be a screen recording. So you're doing something on the screen, you're narrating it and you're recording it. Just like I did on the slide before where I showed you how to create all these sections that was done through a regular screen recording, uh, also through PowerPoint, by the way. Or it could be a video of you. So if you want to, for example, take a video of you doing the introduction, that would be always welcome. And I think that's a great way to start off a course or even to end a course in the summary section. Those would be the three types of video lessons that you can create and then upload. Now, each lesson should be at least one minute long and 20 minutes at the max. But the typical range for a lesson is probably anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So maybe some of the overview lessons that you create, the agenda lesson, for example, those will be on the shorter side. They will be one, two, three minutes long at the most. And then you might have some longer lessons, but make sure that they don't exceed 20 minutes. Then we would much rather break this up into smaller chunks. So try to stick around five to 10 minutes for each lesson. If you're presenting something in PowerPoint, that would probably equate to maybe five, six, seven slides or so, maybe a minute, minute and a half or so per slide. Um, and you can, of course, uh, try this out yourself. It all depends on how you present and how you speak. Um, a course can have as many lessons as you want to, but we try to make sure that an entire course should not be longer than four hours. If you have something that's longer than four hours, think about maybe splitting it into two separate courses instead. If you feel really strongly about that this course needs to be longer than four hours, then let us know and we can certainly make an exception. But as a general rule, our courses should be anywhere from you know, half hour on the short end and four hours on the max. And the most courses are probably anywhere from one to two hours. So let me show you an example of these lessons. Here's a course that I created. 
Um, and notice that it says here the course is locked in the upper right uh, because this course is live on the website already. So as an instructor, I can't make changes to it anymore now. And when you look at the sections, you notice that I followed the typical layout uh, that we already discussed. I started out with an intro section. Then I have two main sections for this course, a summary and an appendix. And when I open the intro section, for example, notice that I uploaded three lessons for this intro section. I start out with a short little welcome message and I quickly walk through the agenda of the course followed by a short intro lesson where I talk about, in this case, about this asset history sheet report, give a little background information, and then I give an overview of the actual course and what we'll be discussing. So those are my three lessons in the intro section. And if I close this now and go to my first main section, I have just created one lesson here. So there's only one fairly long lesson in my main section. This first one is almost 20 minutes long. It's probably almost too long. I should consider splitting this up into maybe two shorter lessons. People really like to uh, watch shorter videos these days. 20 minutes seems like a pretty big commitment these days. And I did the same thing for the configuration section, also the summary section. I have one lesson here where I just summarize um, what we discussed in the course, the key learning points and the takeaways. And then in the appendix section, I just uploaded a PDF document, which is a, a template that the student can use. And that covers uh, how you add these lessons to it. Now let's talk about how you create or record these actual lessons. If we remember, there's three types of lessons that you can create. Uh, the first one would be the easiest one that's a powerpoint presentation just like i'm doing now i have powerpoint slides and i'm simply narrating each individual slide and i'm recording my audio with it the next option would be a screen recording i've already shown you two screen recordings on the previous slides um, i created those in powerpoint as well but there's dif different kinds of softwares that allow you to do screen recordings or screencasts and then the third option would be an actual video of you. Um, this, those would be nice for a summary section or an intro section. Uh, would be just you presenting or introducing the learner to the uh, course. To create a PowerPoint lesson, the first thing you need to do is obviously create the slides, put them into our format. And once you've done this, you simply click on the slideshow tab in PowerPoint and that's where you have the option to record your audio for a slide. Once you've done that, you see that little icon in the bottom right, that little speaker icon indicating that there's audio that has been recorded for this particular slide. When you're done recording the audio for all of your slides in your presentation, you simply chop it up into the little lessons that you've designed and save each individ individual lesson as a video in right in PowerPoint. You can create a screen recording lesson also very easily right in PowerPoint. Um, if you are on the latest PowerPoint release, I use PowerPoint 365 and in that release you simply click on the insert tab right here and then over on the right there is an option where you can insert a screen recording very easy to do. If you don't have this PowerPoint version, that's fine. There's lots of other softwares out there that allow you to do screen recordings or screencasts. You can Google it or you can ask us. We can recommend a few tools. So some of them are free. Others cost just a few bucks. And, and then there's some, of course, that are pretty expensive. But again, I, I created this right here in uh, PowerPoint. If you want to create a video-based lesson where the video is off yourself that could be you presenting something on stage like you see here or maybe you sitting in your office at your desk uh, or a video of you doing the introduction or the summary for a video or maybe even a mashup like you see here where it's your video in front of a white screen mashed together with an SAP screen. Um, those are all great video based lessons.